Good morning, everyone. Respected chief guest, Dr. Syed Habib. Director, Father Roshan Pereira SJ. Principal, Mr. C.R. Rajendra. Vice Principal, Mrs. Smita Chako. Parents, staff, and my dear students. Today, we have gathered here to observe the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. It is observed annually on 26th June since 1989. The theme for the year 2021 is Share Drug Facts to Save Lives. Initiation of substance use in early adolescence is predictive of many negative outcomes in adulthood. To list a few, compromising work and educational achievements, depression, irritability, agitation, anxiety, and mood swings. Today, we are going to hear a lot more of the adverse effects of drug abuse. And even from our chief guest for today, Dr. Saeed Habib, who's a leadership coach, an author, motivator, and a Josephite. To begin with this program, let's supplicate and present our petitions to God. I now call upon Ms. Dana George to invoke God's blessings. Prayer is a spiritual communication between man and God, a two-way relation in which man should not only talk to God, but also listen to him. Prayer to God is like a child's conversation with his father. It is natural for a child to ask his father for the things he need. Billy Graham. Kindly bow your heads and close your eyes for the prayer. Dear Lord, as we rise to meet each new day, please let us be filled with your spirit. Help us to study and apply your word to our lives each day. We thank you for this event and your purpose for it. Our prayer today is that your will be done through this event. Take what we have prepared and multiply our efforts for only you can do it. God of mercy, to many of the people we care so much about, we ask that you help remove the addiction to drugs off their mind. Create in them a new heart, a heart that will fear you, as the scripture says, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Look with compassion, enfold them in your love, all those who have lost their health and freedom. Lord, we ask for healing in families torn apart by addiction. Pour out your grace on each person who has been affected by someone with addiction. May you restore their sense of self-worth. May they find redemption and restoration in you, O Lord. Give a vision of what life can be for a person freed from pain and addiction. Help us to be self-aware of when we are falling into temptation and turn quickly back to you. All this we ask in your most holy name. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Nana, for this invitation prayer. Let God give us the courage to turn our weakness into strength. I now request Ms. Sylvia to welcome an inspiring personnel, our chief guest of today's program. Thank you, Ms. Asha. A very good morning to all. I would like to take this opportunity in welcoming you all to this educative webinar on drug abuse and illicit trafficking. We have a very vibrant personality amongst us. It's such an honor 
to introduce our keynote speaker of the day, Dr. Sayyid Habib Pasha. Dr. Sayyid Habib is a person who is not just a life coach, but also an international coach in the field of leadership. Apart from being a coach, Sir is also an under founder trustee of the United Foundation, a Bangalore based NGO. He has authored books on self help, and his international bestsellers are Warrior Within You and Tie Your Camel. Dr. Habib has trained around 52,000 people across India, UAE, Malaysia, and KSA. He loves to work with adolescents and youth and accompany them in their journey towards self-transformation without compromising on the core human values. I have had the privilege of knowing Dr. Habib personally, and I have always admired his quality of being punctual and his willingness to always help. Dr. Habib always introduces himself as a proud Josephite and has always found ways to reach out to the needy. He's closely associated with SJPUC, imparting life skills to our students, and has conducted interactive sessions on anger management, stress management, problem solving, to name a few. He has also conducted leadership training programs for the SJPUC Students Council and other leaders of our student fraternity. He is a perfect example for a person who thinks both from his heart and mind. An inspiring personality with a perfect where empathy meets practicality. He is a humane and a compassionate person and reaches out genuinely to inspire people wherever he goes. A very warm welcome to you, sir. I'm sure our students have a lot to learn from you today. Over to you, Dr. Habib. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That Thank was you such so a much. So beautiful much. introduction. And um, I hope my audio is clear. Uh, yes, sir. It's clear. Thank you so much. Sure. So before even beginning this uh, beautiful day where the entire world is celebrating its, uh, its togetherness against this evil, you know, it's always a battle in this world when we've come. It's always a battle between good and evil. And we call this evil, which is taking the world by storm. Uh, and we are all together in it against this entire uh, menace, which has costed people, which has costed the youth, which has costed so many families their happiness and their, uh, you know, stability. Uh, I would like to tell that... Uh, all of us are in our lives sometime or the other challenged by uh, vices, challenged by weaknesses, right? So I want to start with that aspect because I don't want the youngsters here, the students here to feel that people who are speaking, people like me who are speaking on this platform are free of being tested. Every single human being, when we come into this world, we come with our own destiny of tests. And these tests are put in front of us to make us stronger, not to succumb to them, right? We have to acknowledge that fact. You cannot feel exclusive. You cannot feel that I am not uh, among the crowd. I'm not among the people who are clean and pure. There's nothing such as that. Only angels are pure. Human beings are tested. Human beings are always at the helm of test, but the test uh, Almighty gives us is to make us better. That's the message we miss out. And that's why youngsters, when they don't understand the concept of a test or something which is so, you know, uh, uh, attractive or something which is so, uh, uh, it has such a pull, right? And it has such a peer pressure. People succumb to it because they don't understand that this is a test for me to test out my uh, will say, uh, to say no. My will to say no to it, right? So that's where youngsters succumb. So I'm trying to uh, start engaging with you with a connect saying that I too get tested. I too get 
are tested every single day and the tests can vary the tests of these vices or these attractions can be very different right and the beauty is if i am able to stand strong and say no i graduate my quality and character to the next uh, i mean the audience the young boys here would be probably thinking that yeah you know you get chosen and uh, people are extraordinary because they uh, they are born like that it's not like that so i'm breaking that barrier between you and me and trying to tell you that as much as every single soul here gets tested with different kind of vices different kind of uh, issues different kind of wrongs every single person on this audience gets that test so now i i would like to uh, because i have got a very limited slot i would like to engage with you on a very important uh, experiment which was done the experiment was about a frog so uh, there was an experiment conducted and uh, a frog was taken and a frog was kept in a pan a frog was kept in a pan of water and this water was boiled this water was gradually heated so the frog this the, the observation was the frog was sitting in the water they lit the stove and they started warming up the water as the water was warming up the frog absolutely did not move the temperature of the water increased as it increased increased they found very strangely that the frog did not move and eventually it did not move till the water was boiling even when it was boiling it was not moving they had to rescue the frog out it was very strange because usually it is assumed that when the temperature increases and it becomes unbearable the frog needs to move right so the frog didn't move because it was inside the environment from the minute it got into that bowl of water it was inside the environment it never understood the change they took another they did another experiment parallelly where they took a bowl and started heating the water gradually till it became a bit warm and then put the frog in but here it was strange the moment the frog got inside it felt the heat and it jumped out this is this was the famous frog uh in the boiling water syndrome it is said that when we are inside an environment and we get sucked into that environment we do not understand what kind of a grief problem we are inside this is the first thing which i would like all of you to observe the frog inside the water from the time they put it on the stove and start boiling it it, it was inside the environment it's inside the water it did not realize that the temperature of the water was going up and it almost died sitting there not moving even when the water was boiling right note this, this is a very important psychological understanding you need to have when you need to battle vices when you need to battle drugs when you need to back, battle that environment if you are inside it we will not realize that we are inside it right so you have to, you the the only way you can battle this vice is to get out of the environment that's get out the, of the that's the most basic thing that's one of the most important thing i'm you're going to share with you a, a story of a boy named raju as a case study itself so that you understand uh, this whole uh, uh, issue which the world is facing so raju young uh, boy from a middle class family joined the college and when he came into the college he was from a middle class family he had very big dreams and aspirations he had dreams where he said and he came in with an intention of becoming a paramedic so when he joined the first year he had big dreams aspirations and he looked at his family he looked at his parents he said i have to get into this college i have to complete my studies i have to become a paramedic i have to go to the uk work there send money get my parents off the debt get my sister married and all these dreams were there with raju and the moment raju came into the college he experienced exactly what most of the kids experience most of the youngsters most of the students experience the interaction with 
your own classmates as well as your seniors and in that interaction as days went by people started talking offering rubbing of habits and then uh, they uh, they offered him cigarettes when they offered him cigarettes he refused because he's from a middle class responsible family and he was coming here into the college with a purpose he had a purpose he had a very strong purpose but the moment he refused the entire peer or or the the students around him who were already there into these things started bullying him started looking down upon him started telling that he is he is an old outdated guy he does not even have the guts to take a puff you know that's how people usually challenge your will power right you are nothing man you are you are just you know you don't have the uh, the style you don't have you're not in you're not in the times you are you're very old kind of school school of thought you're not into the modern age you're not you're not trendy you're not cool and this is what he was facing so whenever he came into the college the people who offered him these things said you don't have the guts man you know you don't have the guts you don't have the strength and this was bothering him quite a bit and then finally he said it's just a puff no i'll show it to these people i'll show it it's just a puff i can show it i'll i'll do it i'll show it to these people that i'm not weak look at the conversation look at the conversation look at the the way a mind works look at the way when people tell you something you are so loose eared that you are going to listen to that and take the garbage and work on that garbage my dear students you need to develop ears of steel you have to have strong listening you cannot be weak in your listening if god has given you a mind it is your mind and you do not have the right to make any garbage get into your mind you will be responsible for your mind don't allow everybody to dump garbage into your mind so what happened to raju he started contemplating and then finally succumbed he said it's just a puff i'll show it to these guys my dear friends my dear children my dear students you don't have to show anything to anybody in this world you just have to be you and discover your own strengths that's the purpose of this life right discover it, it takes a lifetime to discover your strengths why are you wasting time in listening to people especially people who know that they are not meaning good for you understand the intent you're foolish if you listen to a person who's trying to tell you that strength lies in showing off and you know taking a puff ridiculous right raju did it raju took that puff and he did not know that 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 just was not an ordinary cigarette it was intentionally offered and it had drugs informal and it became such a uh, such a such an attraction for him that he did did not even know that he was inside the pan of boiling water he was also already inside and day by day his habit increased he had the cravings and he had to go to the next level he had to take a bigger a stronger dose and this went on and on and he did not have money because he came from a middle class family he started begging he started borrowing he started stealing he started pulling money from his home he started borrowing from friends and finally everything exhausted nobody was willing to give now because he was borrowing and he is not returning so now he didn't have any way he was he, he was you know getting a bit uh, upset about not being able to afford it enter another friend rishab who says raju don't worry i have a way out and he takes him to some of the lanes very dingy lanes inside bangalore where he takes him to a peddler and he says he introduces him and says uh, if you deal with him you will get it free said so how how can that be so the peddler gives him a trial assignment saying that take this and sell it push it into the market and i will cover for you 
from a person who was into self abuse he has graduated into a person who has been a source of abuse to many thousands of people and he takes that he takes that as an opportunity he bites into it he goes all out and starts selling parents are also not very you know observant they are not seeing these changes but then these things don't, don't hide such things don't get hidden it it gets exposed lies dirt bad habits do get exposed you cannot hide them they start observing his friends his relatives his parents they start observing that uh, he he is actually hanging around with different people he is not caring about his appearance he is no more caring about his food no no more caring about his sleep he is not attending college enough his results are showing a very major dip he is missing classes he is losing interest in his normal hobbies he is having quarrels with people often and he also in his language starts talking about uh, i am going to run away i am going to take my life and things like that now why did i tell you all this is because to make you and myself realize that a habit like this does the, does not have impact on only one side of life it is like a snowball it hits every single aspect of a human being's life now if i ask you what are the so very important and critical areas of your life i'm sure you're going to say career self development relationships health wealth spirituality these are common areas important areas of a human being's life right now look at what happened to raju his career is getting hit badly do you think of any self development zilch zero what about his relationships getting into a bad mess what about his health direct impact what about his money completely a disaster spirituality no questions do you think he has time to connect to god connect do something good for society absolutely no one one puff costed him all the six areas of his life look at the damage look at the damage which raju has created for himself at this time he bumps into a very old very sincere friend ricardo and ricardo comes to raju and says raju what are you doing man what are you doing with your wife what are you doing with your 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 life sorry what are you doing with your life what are you doing with your uh, the, the opportunity you have what are you doing with your dreams what are you doing how are you so deluded how are you so distracted i remember seeing you as a person who is so passionate about uh, becoming a, a a hero in the medical field a person who wanted to be a paramedic so clear a person who wanted to support his parents a person who wanted to see his sister married what are you doing with yourself and there's a conversation they spend quite a bit of time and raju is like you know yeah man i mean i really don't know how i got into this mess remember the frog in the boiling water he's inside he's inside the mess so he's not able to understand when ricardo shakes him up and says what are you doing with your life man get out of this otherwise you'll be a complete con case and you'll actually be a disaster and a curse for your own family raju shakes up and he you know when he is going back home after meeting ricardo there are thoughts in his mind saying that what am i what am i doing is this where i have to be let me get out of this and he goes home but as he reaches home his craving starts as he reaches home his craving starts he says i need i need the stuff i need the stuff and then he recalls and then rishab calls rishab says there's a consignment waiting there's a package waiting raju raju rushes out he's not able to control himself he rushes he goes out takes the packet takes the package and they they told him to deliver it at a particular park the people waiting at that park please go deliver the packet takes the packet goes to the park meets that customer 
and then hands over the package while transacting he fails to realize that the person who he's dealing with is actually from the police department he does not know that it is a setup and it is a police department which is trying to transact with him he does the transaction and suddenly the entire team comes in and captures rishab and raju and they are convicted they are convicted at this moment suddenly the phone rings the phone rings and raju suddenly jumps out of his bed looks at the phone ringing and he says gosh after meeting ricardo i came back home and i slept i had this dream i had this dream that i went to the park gave the parcel and i got caught with the police what would happen really if it happened and when he sees the phone he sees rishab calling him he has a choice to make to accept rishab's call or to reject it to accept rishab's call is to put his life in disaster and to reject that call is to get back on track and do something for his life and for his people around what would you do what would you do that's my question what would you do look at both sides of the picture you accept the call you are gone you're finished because that's like the frog inside the water you reject the call you are out of that environment there are many people like rishab in your life who will come and offer you who will tell you that it is it is very attractive on the other side once you get here you're going to be cool you're going to get access to all the things which you always dream for all the vices which you dream for no you always have the choice to reject that call and raju did exactly that because he had a dream in the dream he saw that he took the package went to the park delivered got caught with the police and his life was messed that can happen to anybody any time in this field he rejects the call deletes the number goes back to his parents apologizes he says i am not going to be in this i have to get back on track he goes talks to the people talks to the college talks to the counselors he also finds out that there is help available from all sides without being judgmental one of the things which youngsters feel is once i am into this would people accept me if i am trying to give it up everybody empathizes everybody understands that these are the slips anybody would have gone through in life so people are ready to help ready to support all you need to do is reach out raju reached out raju reached out to his parents raju reached back to his college raju reached out to the help the pure help available and they held him tight they took him with him uh, they they took, took took him along the system they took him and they did not judge him he moved out of college in good uh, you know he had good marks he got a good uh, ranking he moved out of college got through his certification of paramedics went to uk started serving and raju is one of the personification of thousands and thousands of people who worked in the front line during the pandemic saving hundreds of lives what a story think about it what a story imagine we are all going through the pandemic for the last one and a half years the pandemic has taught us a lesson but you know what this pandemic i'm sure with all the the medical support we are going to get through it hopefully we are going to get through it god willingly we are going to get through it but the bigger pandemic is the drug abuse which is something which is something which you and i have to stand strong against individually and collectively to be able to fight it out and eradicate it from the face of the earth and it is possible 
and it is possible if we stand together and it is the need of the hour so remember before i sign off remember the the frog in the water boiling water syndrome do not get into the pan do not fall for these invitations for from people like rishab they will always be there but you always have the choice to reject their call and you know what if you are tied down to an inspirational goal for your life because you have one life you have a limited time in this world and if you really are aspiring and you are tied down to make something out of your life you will always say no and i'm sure people who have not fallen for these vices are people who have had strong dreams strong aspirations and always had that strength because that's an inner strength which you stand up and say no so my dear uh, students uh, faculty friends uh, let's all get together on this day and pray to the almighty that he helps us with our will power he helps us to see that the world is a better place to live in and he helps us to see that we get through all these tough times and let me guarantee you one thing tough times uh, will always be there this is not paradise this world is not paradise it's always going to have it's going to be decorated with a lot of tough times tough times never last but that's the beauty about it they always come and go tough times never last tough people do that's what is a beautiful saying right so i'm a part of uh, a very big organization called mercy mission i'm the president of mercy mission and we've got thousands of volunteers so this is my note to end this uh, talk that we've got thousands of volunteers and we've done some work which it's it's humanly unbelievable it's it's something which i cannot even uh, it, it's it's in, impossible to dream plan and do this we started mercy mission when the pandemic hit the first wave hit and uh, we brought about 25 ngos together in bangalore and said that if the pandemic is going to come in like what is predicted we will not be able to handle it alone so we need to work as a as a big team so 25 ngos came together thousands of volunteers and some unbelievable stuff has been done in the last two years my highlight of telling you this is that in that thousands of volunteers most of the volunteers were young students like you who dared who were uh, who were courageous enough to come out on the field and support the world and i've interacted with many of them you know and most of them are people very ordinary students young fellows young buddies you know and small uh, groups of friends two three four they come and say sir i want to volunteer i want to do something and they really did it unbelievable stuff we we really served uh, in the first uh, first wave we served about 107 sharmik trains with over 2 and 1/2 lakh people with food we we dished out through 33 kitchens across bangalore we dished out 27 lakh hot meals we uh, also uh, uh, we partnered with a lot of uh, organizations and we gave food uh, ration kits uh, which were over uh, 20 20 20 20 20 to 25 lakh ration kits to people and some humongous kind of work has been done i'll give you a highlight the last part we established something called as mercy angels this is a team of young students who used to take dead bodies covid positive dead bodies and give them their last journey we had this mercy angels working and most of them are young buddies like you young students young people like you when i interacted with them i found out a lot of ground grounding a very strong grounding of values and they had a dream and they had a purpose they said if i am in this world i have to be of benefit to others so my note to end this talk is that if we are able to understand that you and i are born in this world for a purpose and that purpose is to be of benefit to mankind i'm sure something like drugs will never be 
even close to even people like Risha will never even have the guts to come and approach you, right? So I would request you to create friends, circles of friends who have this common passion of making a difference to world, to this world. And that could also be standing against these vices in the times to come. And I really wish you all the best. Hold on to your dreams. Hold fast to your dreams. Hold fast to your families. And, you know, in these days when we have lost so many people in the close circles, treasure the people who are around us. This day, I ask for a simple act. Go back to when you go back home, give your family members a tight hug, tell them how much you love them, and give a commitment that I'm going to stand for uh, a dream and I'm going to stay away from all the vices. Give them a commitment. So that would really bring about a strong bonding between you all, you know, as friends and families, which will create a solid ecosystem and never allow you to get into a boiling pan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the time. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring presentation. Thank sir you. has rightly called this drug abuse a pandemic. So we are prone to test, especially this adolescent stage. We need to be strong, uh, like how a genuine goal will attempt to stand test like an acid test or a magnet test. So we really are proud of you, sir. And we, I feel uh, that we are unlucky that we couldn't meet you personally. And your stimulating uh, speech and comments were very timely, sir. And as we are entering a new growth phase, all those points which you mentioned are very, very important. And we will definitely use your suggestions in the future. So Thank a lot you, of uh, Mercy Mission work we heard a lot from you. Uh, God bless you, sir in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. We'll meet soon. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Drug abuse is a major problem in many countries and many studies, surveys and case reports have described the adverse social and medical effects of drug abuse. Now, let's watch a video presentation Highlighting these facts. Consider a parasite growing on a tree. If you let it grow, it would suck in all the nutrients required for the growth of that tree. The malnourished tree and its fruits become no good. This is exactly what addiction does to us. It leaves us wanting for nutrients after sucking in all that we get. It adds no value to us or to the people around us. Substance addiction may not be stemming only from the lack of morality or willpower. It could be influenced by many other factors including biology. Certain genetic factors could add to this risk of addiction. This along with environmental factors can influence the risk. Social environment, peer pressure, physical abuse, stress and parental guidance can influence drug abuse and addiction. The brain gets used to the excess of dopamine from the use of drugs reduces the pleasure that the person feels with lower doses and eventually leads the person to consume more drugs than before. Oftentimes, it would have gone beyond our control by the time we realize. It then becomes a struggle between the mind and the body. As much as we want to give it up, our body refuses to cooperate with the lack of drugs. The withdrawal symptoms set in, anxiety, fatigue, depression, hallucination, seizures, etc. Depending on the kind of drug and the duration of time the body has gotten used to. At this stage, one must seek help. It could come from informal groups and friends, but is better still if it is from professional quarters like rehabilitation centers. 
The pursuit of freedom from addiction is much like fishing. It takes time and persistent efforts. But you will surely get what you wanted. The key to getting out of addiction is to get involved in things other than what you are addicted to. To develop a love for such things or for such people. Today, if you saw somebody chained to a post, you would do something about it. But in the days of the transatlantic slave trade, it was a normal sight to see. It isn't as clear today of what modern slavery looks like. But by knowing the signs of human trafficking, you can help protect yourself and you can help protect others. Traffickers would often brand their victims with tattoos using words such as daddy or cash. Trafficking victims may show sudden changes of dress and behavior. They may suddenly have possessions that they usually can't afford. They may have unusually long work hours. Victims may have new relationships with boyfriends or girlfriends that are noticeably older. And I'm not talking about a few years. Difficulty with making eye contact, especially with men. Victims may have untreated medical problems such as cuts, bruises, burns, broken bones. They may miss school frequently, make frequent trips. Victims may be unable to speak independently. Other people may insist on answering questions for them or even translating for them. Victims may even be frightened of authorities seeing them as the bad guys. It was indeed the need of the hour. So let's remember these valuable values in our life. In the video, we saw that parental care is very important. Analysis have revealed a number of drug abuse risk factors that can be reduced by parental action. These include Poor family management practices, permissive parental attitudes towards adolescent drug use, high levels of family conflict, low levels of family bonding, peer influences to begin drug use. The identification of a set of risk factors for drug abuse that can be addressed by family action has increased interest in parenting skills training as a drug abuse prevention strategy. We have come to the end of the program. Gratitude is a powerful catalyst for happiness. With this note, I now call upon Ms. Sri Devi to propose the oath of thanks. Sridevi, ma'am, you are on mute. Sorry. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good morning to one and all present here. I deem it my pleasure to propose the vote of thanks. Let me begin by thanking the Lord Almighty for bringing us together amidst this pandemic. My heartfelt gratitude to our guest speaker, Dr. Syed Habib Pasha, Thank you, sir, for that wonderful message. I'm sure the audience have gained a lot of information and insight on drug abuse and illicit trafficking. I would like to thank our director, Reverend Father Roshan Pereira SJ, for his guidance, encouragement, and support. I thank our principal, Mr. C.R. Rajendra, for his stewardship and commitment. I extend my gratitude to our vice principal, Ms. Smita Chako, for her meticulous planning and support. 
I owe my gratitude to the social concern team for taking up the initiative to bring in an awareness amongst our audience. I thank our staff, students, and parents for being a part of this event, and it would not have been fruitful without your presence. Thank you, one and all. Have a nice day.